Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to everyone joining us tonight. Welcome to the last segment of the reading of Reclaim Your Heart with uh, the Medina Institute. We are also joined by Sister Taslima Ali, who will be our reflector, as well as Sister Suraya Roika, Suraya Roika who will be our narrator. Uh, we are very excited and also a bit sad that this is the last time we will be engaging with everyone. And we also wish that everyone has learned something and also um, strengthened their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and themselves and those around them as well within the last four weeks. Uh, so without any further ado, we will start with uh, Sister Suraya Roika that will begin with the first reading, inshallah. Shukran Muslima for the introduction. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, to this final installment of the reading session hosted by Medina Institute. Tonight I will be reading to you from various chapters. Um, the first subtitle is Heddle, headed a sacred conversation. There is a time of night when the whole world transforms. The responsibilities of work, school and family dominate much of our attention. Other than the time we take for the five daily prayers, it is hard to also take time out to reflect or even relax. However, there is a time of night when work ends, traffic sleeps, and silence is the only sound. At that time, while the world around us sleeps, there is one who remains awake and waits for us to call on him. We are told in the Hadith Qudsi, our Lord descends during the last third of each night to the lower heaven and says, is there anyone who calls on me that I may respond to him? Is there anyone who asks me that I may give unto him? Is there anyone who requests my forgiveness that I may forgive him? Buhari and Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, exalted is he, has told us at this time of night, just before dawn, he will come to his servants. The Lord of the universe has offered us a sacred conversation with him. That Lord waits for us to come speak with him. And yet many of us leave him waiting while we sleep in our beds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes to us and asks us what we want from him. And yet we sleep. There will come a day when this veil of deception will be lifted. On that day, we will see the true reality. On that day, we will realize that two rakaats of prayer were greater than everything in the heavens and the earth. There will come a day when we would give up everything under the sky just to come back and pray those two rakaats. But on that day, there will be some from whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn away and forget. And they had once forgotten him. The Quran says, he will say, my Lord, why have you raised me blind while I was once seen? Allah will say, thus did our signs come to you and you forgot them? And thus will you this day be forgotten. Quran 20, 125 to 126. In Surah Al-Mu'mineen, Allah says, do not cry out today. Indeed, by us you will not be helped. Quran 2365. Can you imagine for a moment what these ayahs are saying? This is not about being forgotten by an old friend or a classmate. This is about being forgotten by the Lord of the worlds. Not hellfire, not boiling water, not scalded skin, there is no punishment greater than this. And as there is no punishment greater than this, there is no reward greater than what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam describes in the following hadith. 
when those deserving of paradise would enter paradise, the blessed and the exalted would ask, do you wish me to give you anything more? They would say, has thou not brightened our faces? Hast thou not made us enter paradise and saved us from fire? He would lift the veil and of the things given to them, nothing would be dearer to them than the sight of their Lord, the mighty and the glorious, Sahih Muslim. However, one does not need to wait until that day to know the result of this nighttime meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The truth is, there are no words to describe the overwhelming peace in this life from such a conversation. One can only experience it to know. When you experience Qiyam, the late night prayer, the rest of your life transforms. Suddenly, the burdens that once crushed you will become light. The problems that were irresolvable will become solved. And that closeness to your creator, which was once unreachable, will become your only lifeline. Shukran Muslima, that concludes the first section of our reading session for this evening. Shukran, Sister Surya. We will now ask Sister Taslima for the reflection on that piece. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, beloved sisters, um, Sister Muslima, Sister Surya, all of our mothers, sisters, and daughters that have joined us um, this evening. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, and I ask you to be patient with us. I think on a weekly basis, I try to encourage the reminder that we are all students and that we are all on a journey closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And praise be to Allah from whom we ask help and pardon, in whom we seek protection from the evil within ourselves. He whom Allah guides has no one who can lead him astray. And he whom Allah leads us today has no one to guide him. I testify that there is no God but Allah. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa sallam, is his servant and messenger. May the blessings of Allah be upon him, his family, companions, the righteous that follow them until the day of judgment. I mean, subhanAllah, I am a little bit sad today. I'm really sad. Because I think if I was to look at my own journey um, that has brought us to this very book, Reclaim Your Heart, it has been one that possibly has been my entire lifetime. And to have gone through this book each week with you in the company of those who truly are seeking to grow closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it somehow made it a little bit easier. It made it a little bit easier for me to realize how much of my heart I have given to the world, to my relationships, to the things I have, to the things I want, and how often it has broken my heart in so many different ways. And over this week, through the experience of Ustada Yasmin Mujahid, we have also been able to identify just how many times we have not really given our heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is a painful realization. It's a painful realization, especially since we growing up and, and being taught in so many different ways the oneness of Allah, his wonderful gifts upon us. Amongst the many reminders of our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we tend to still fail and we fail ourselves on a daily basis. And while I'm somebody that's always usually pushing to be positive and pushing to, to, to uplift everyone, I do believe that when it comes to growing and when it comes to succeeding, it needs to come with the realization that there is no elevator to that instant success. That everything we do is hard work. And so that means we've got to take the stairs. 
And sometimes when we are faced with these challenges and these difficulties, we tend to give up on ourselves. And this is one of those things that you really cannot. And so Sister Sujaya has opened up this very special time that Allah has given us. And this is a gift in itself. The hajjud is a gift in itself. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends. Allah descends. And in that, we obviously have a choice. We can either sit and complain about everything that is going wrong. We can also sit and continue wishing and pushing to get what we really want, not realizing how tired Allah is going to make us because nothing will happen unless Allah wills it to happen. And Allah says this in Hadith Kursi. He says that I will tire you because only what I will will happen but when you submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all sincerity with in your entire heart with everything being completely completely open and naked before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knows everything that is when Allah actually grants you everything and this very special hour of tahajjud I don't know about you, but I have heard about so many people that have woken up at that hour and have truly repented, truly turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and was granted, granted verily. And so sometimes we cry and we'll say, oh, but I am praying. Oh, but I am doing these things. But we sometimes go through a very blind period where we don't actually realize that what we are doing is not enough in the sense that of its quality and in sense of how much we are giving back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when we sometimes feel that we are stuck, it's sometimes time for us to look at what we are doing and how much we are giving. It's not just lip service. It's not just coming there at that time and saying, Ya Rab, help me on X, Y, and Z. But the minute you get off that musada, you are turning in a different direction and you are running away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not going to work if you are creating different gods for yourself in this world. It's not going to work if you are, if you are following leaders that do not grow you and bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's something that really stands out for me. So one of my other favorite books is by Sheikh Muhammad bin Yahya al husseini al Minawi. For those of you that haven't read it, it is the book of love. It's a book of aphorisms, but ones that really make you reflect. And in it, he says that the true Muslim is one who is in total salam, that is inner peace, tranquility, submission, and spiritual illumination. Islam means salam. And the key to salam is total submission to him with the mind and heart, not just the body and tongue. And so this very special time, which is the hajjud. And when I was reading this, I was thinking, subhanAllah, do you know how many times I complained about I just can't sleep at night and I can't sleep and okay I go back onto my phone and I'm busy with my phone and I still can't sleep and the next day I am so exhausted because I just can't sleep at night until I realize that maybe it's just my soul my soul that is really the distress my soul that is wanting me to get up and make wudu and to start speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's not just about getting up and making that to that and jumping back in bed and oh, it's not that it's more it's about connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really truly connecting and you have to think about how you're connecting with Allah. Where is that sincerity coming from? Because something that's very important, and I know I need to hand back to, to Muslima, but I'm wanting to say something that I learned um, about two years ago. I needed to have a biopsy. And 
I go to my sheikh and I said, sheikh, I need to, I'm going for this and I'm so worried. Can you please make dua for me? Because I don't think I'm deserving of Allah's rahmah. And he said, Taslima, Allah doesn't like us to doubt him. And that's subhanAllah. He touched my heart and I said, Ya Rab, how can I doubt my Rab? And so I, I, I went into that theater and I remember just laying down and I started reciting salawat and I was reciting and reciting. Alhamdulillah, it came back clear. But if anything, I got to understand that we don't doubt Allah. And that's the thing. You've got to place your full faith and belief in Allah. You've got to hand over your matters to Allah. And you need to be able to open your heart and you need to pull it out. And this isn't only about the bad times, it's about the good times too. But we're going to go a bit forward and I'm going to hand back over to Sister Muslim, inshallah. Shukran, uh, Sister Taslima, for that reflection. Uh, I think it's also important to note that sometimes people even struggle to get to the stage where they they feel like they, they, they don't know how or they are doing something, but it feels like it's not enough or they're making salah, they're making dua, but they can't cry and, and they don't really feel it. But that is... By you doing something, it's a great way for your heart to open up to that. And that is why we have um, three different stages. Even in, in um, Surah Sajda, the, the ayah says, um, Muslimina wal Muslimat, and then Mu'minina wal Mu'minat. Because the first step is to actually do something. And the, the, the third of our our deen which is islam is the action and then the iman is the part internally that you feel you feel it by doing those actions and by doing it consistently and then what comes afterwards is you stand and that if you do it consistently consistently with the hope and and keeping the, the faith and and the strength and then ihsan will come and help you perfect that and that's the that's important point to also just, you know, keep you motivated and just to tell everyone that there is still hope regardless of how, how little you feel you might be doing. But um, I will now hand over to Sister Suraya to do the next section of the reading, inshallah. Shukran, Sister Muslima. For the second installment of the reading, it is titled, Why Aren't My Prayers Being Answered? The question is, why aren't my prayers being answered? The answer, may Allah reward you for asking such an honest question and may he guide us towards the truth, Amin. I think what happens in this type of situation is that we mix up our means and our ends. When we make dua for a good husband, for example, is that a strong marriage is a means or an end? I think many people take it as an end which explains much of the disillusionment and disappointment that often follows, ironically, in both cases, whether we get it or whether we don't. Like everything in this dunya, marriage is only a means, a means to reach Allah. So if we pray for it and we don't get it, perhaps Allah has chosen another means for us, perhaps through hardship, the purification it may cause and the sabr it builds to bring us to that end, to Allah. It may be, as only Allah knows best, that had he given us that amazing husband we made dua for, it would have us heedless and therefore not achieve our end at all. Instead, however, of seeing it like this, I think the problem is we are seeing things as just the opposite. The dunya, for example, that great job, the certain type of spouse, having a child, school, career, etc., is our end, and Allah is the means that we use to get there. We use that means through making dua to achieve our end, whatever it is that we're making dua for. 
And then we get disappointment when our means or Allah didn't come through for us. We throw our hands up in the air and say our du'as are not being answered. Our means is just isn't coming through for us. But Allah isn't a means. He is the end. The ultimate objective of any du'a itself is to build our connection to Allah. Through du'a, we become closer to him. So, I think the problem is that our focus is wrong. That's why I love the du'a of istikhara so much. It's just perfect because it acknowledges that Allah only knows best and then asks for him to bring what is best and take away what is not best. The focus of that du'a is not that which you are asking for. The focus is what is best in this life and the next. This is not to say that we cannot make du'a for things specifically that we want. On the contrary, Allah loves for us to ask of him. But it means that once we ask, do our part to the utmost and put our trust in Allah, we are pleased with what Allah chooses for us. And we realize that Allah answers all dua, but not always in the form that we expect. And that is simply because our knowledge is limited and his is unlimited. In his infinite knowledge, he may send us what he knows to be better for us in achieving the ultimate end, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shukran Muslima, that brings me to the end of the second part of this reading session. Shukran Sister Suraya, that, that was very insightful, especially uh, regarding, you know, making dua and when sometimes people speak about them not having time and um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but the when our focus is wrong, uh, just one very important aspect of it in our daily lives is that we usually plan our salah around the time that we have left. But in actual fact, if, if we had to plan our days around salah times, we would see so much more barakah in that. And that is just one simple example of our focus being off. And we find that we have very little time and there's not enough time for everything. But if we just do that one simple shift, we, won't, we might even see the change immediately. And that's what, will, that's what will bring, you know, the light and the hope and the faith back in our lives. But we will carry on with a reflection by Sister Taslima. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Kullanu yusibana ila ma katabullahu lana wa maulana wa ala allahi fal yatawakalil muhaminun. Say nothing will happen to us except what Allah has decreed for us. He is our protector. And on Allah, let the believers put their trust. SubhanAllah, when we look at our Holy Quran, when we look at all of the scriptures, when we listen to the nasihas, when we reflect upon hadith, we are told all the time about the oneness of Allah. In fact, what makes us Muslim is accepting that there's only one God, and that is Allah. And when one truly reflects on, on it, one also needs to realize the many gifts and the keys that Allah has given us. Allah has given us all of the keys. So in fact, even dua is a gift from Allah. It is the ability to have a connection with Allah, the ability to have a conversation with Allah, to ask of Allah, to thank Allah. And one needs to, when one, when one actually reflects on whether your du'as are answered or not. Sometimes we need to take time and then really look back at the things we've asked of Allah and whether they have been granted 
and whether they've been granted in different ways and different forms. In fact, um, another one of the aphorisms on Sheikh Nenewi's book is that there are three part P's on the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is patience, it is persistence, and it is perseverance. And he says that if you do not have this, you are not going anywhere spiritually. And subhanAllah, we know and we understand that our journey is ultimately to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we reflect upon our du'as and sometimes get a little bit frustrated and feel a bit hopeless, one needs to also understand that your du'as are answered in different ways. Some may be answered immediately, some may be delayed until Allah knows when it's best to be granted to you. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants it in the year after. And we have to trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he loves us. Allah loves us completely. Whether we are doing good or not doing good, whether we are supplicating or not, we are providing. And even though we are Muslim, it does not mean that Allah will not test us. Allah will test us. And so Muslima has rightfully pointed out that we need to be turning and actually reflecting on the quality of that dua, on the quality of how um, we are supplicating and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when you are speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what exactly are you asking him for? Are you asking him for something that is going to take you further away from him? Because he doesn't want you to be further away from him. Are you asking for something of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you are still transgressing in everything else? Then we are being weak in person, yet we are seeking the relief from Allah. And ultimately, ultimately, what we are needing to do is to be growing closer to Allah. Ultimately, ultimately, we are to be removing the dunya from our hearts and placing him fully in it. But I also want to say, I think the one thing that might have been a little bit confusing over these weeks was, so, that our entire hearts belongs to Allah and everything that we do, how we manage our relationships, needs to connect to that love for Allah. Everything needs to be to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So does this mean that I now need to adjust my love for my parents or adjust my, my love for my husband or adjust my love for soccer? You don't stop loving. In fact, you love more, but you love it as a gift. And you understand that this world is a temporary one. And those things that you love so much needs to be growing you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes we battle with that. So now, if I really love my husband with all my heart and I'm crying because of something related, does it mean that I don't love Allah? No. If we look at the history of our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mourned. He mourned the loss of his wife. He mourned the loss of his husband. He cried and I was upset when the ummah went through difficulty. He cried to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our beloved Nabi Muhammad, who is so dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, cried to Allah for forgiveness, for guidance, for so much more. And all of our sahabas, every person that, is, that has lived this life has had a struggle, has experienced pain, has experienced difficulty in very similar things as we have. But it is what you are doing in that experience that matters. So when that difficulty comes along, what are you doing? Is Allah the last person that you are turning to? Or is he the first one that you, I mean, mouth not person, is Allah the first one that you are turning to? Or the last? You need to be asking yourself this. 
Something just went wrong. Your heart is shattered. What are you doing? Something is going to happen and you're panicking. What are you doing? Something good has just happened. What are you doing? So you need to constantly, constantly be speaking to yourself, asking yourself, and we commonly amongst us ask, how's our hearts with Allah today? So that when we rise up in the morning, we are going to make a list of how grateful we are to Allah. And when we go back to sleep at night, we are going to reflect on how gorgeous this day was, how beautiful the people are, because that's exactly also it. As Muslims, we are required to see good in others. We are required to see good in situations, not see bad. We are not supposed to be looking at each other with eyes like that, because one of the things that our Sheikh also reminds us is that what we see in others is in ourselves. And so sometimes people in anger, you make a dua for a relief that could be harmful on somebody else. SubhanAllah. Allah has guidance. And sometimes in that anger, you ask for something that is not good for yourself. And so sometimes we wonder, but now why is Allah not answering our du'as? And maybe, maybe we need to reflect on how we are asking, what we are asking for. And we need to acknowledge that we need to submit to Allah, that Allah knows what's best. And Allah will grant us what's best because he loves us so much. And so everything that you have right now, everywhere you are going, is because of Allah and only Allah, and because Allah will say. Sister Muslima? Shukran for that insight, Taslima. And the closer and closer we're getting to the end of it, there's so, many, so much more things that come to your mind and that you think of that you haven't thought of before. And... Also, more importantly, what we still have to do and what we still have to work on regarding ourselves. But with uh, no further ado, we will continue with the reading with Sister Sereya. Shukran. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this part of the reading session falls under a different section called A Woman's Status. And the subtitle is A Letter to the Culture That Raised Me. Growing up, you read me the ugly duckling. And for many years, I believed that was me. For so long, you taught me I was nothing more than a bad copy of the standard. I couldn't run as fast or lift as much. I didn't make the same money and I cried too often. I grew up in a man's world where I didn't belong. And when I couldn't be him, I wanted only to please him. I put on your makeup and wore your short skirts. I gave my life, my body, my dignity for the cause of being pretty. I knew that no matter what I did, I was worthy only to the degree that I could please and be beautiful for my master. And so I spent my life on the cover of Cosmo and gave my body for you to sell. I was a slave but you taught me I was free. I was your object, but you saw it was success. You taught me that my purpose in life was to be on display, to attract and be beautiful for men. You had me believe that my body was created to market your cars. And you raised me to think I was an ugly duckling, but you lied. Islam tells me I am a swan. I'm different. It's meant to be that way. And my body, my soul, was created for something more. God says in the Quran, O mankind, indeed we have created you from male and female and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Indeed, Allah is knowing and acquainted. Quran 49, 13. So I am honored, but it is not by my relationship to men. My value as a woman is not measured by the size of my waist 
or the number of men who like me. My worth as a human being is measured on a higher scale, a scale of righteousness and piety. And my purpose in life, despite what the fashion magazines may say, is something more sublime than just looking good for men. And so God tells me to cover myself, to hide my beauty, and to tell the world that I'm not here to please men with my body. I'm here to please God. God elevates the dignity of a woman's body by commanding that it be respected and covered, shown only to the deserving, only to the man I marry. So to those who wish to liberate me, I have only one thing to say. Thanks, but no thanks. I am not here to be on display and my body is not for public consumption. I will not be reduced to an object or a pair of legs to sell shoes. I am a soul, a mind, a servant of God. My worth is defined by the beauty of my soul, my heart, my moral character. So I won't worship your beauty standards and I don't submit to your fashion sense. My submission is to something higher. With my veil, I put my faith on display rather than my beauty. My value as a human is defined by my relationship with God, not by my looks. I cover the irrelevant. And when you look at me, you don't see a body. You view me only for what I am, a servant of my creator. You see, as a Muslim woman, I've been liberated from a silent kind of bondage. I don't answer to the slaves of God on earth. I answer to their king. Shukran, Muslima. Shukran, Sister Surey. I will now carry on with the reflection with Sister Taslima. Okay, Bismillah. So, a very big topic, I think, in our community, with August being here in South Africa, we get to celebrate all of the strong women in our community. And subhanAllah, when we look at the many sisters, we can be so proud because they've taken up so many leadership positions um, in our community. And I remember Sheikh Ninawi um, doing an interview about two years ago, and he said that Islam is one of the first to have liberated and secured the rights of women. And when we look at the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has dedicated an entire chapter, an entire chapter just for us, not an entire chapter for the brothers, an entire chapter for women an entire chapter. If we look throughout our history, subhanAllah, during the time of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are blessed with so many mothers who were strong, they were intelligent, they were supportive, and they are indeed not only our mothers, but great examples for us as strength. And when we talk about this very topic, of hijab, we know that it's not an easy one. Not everyone has taken to wearing hijab, but I do believe that when you align yourself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and when you commit to the choices that you make, that it is for Allah, it becomes a bit easier. It becomes much easier, in fact. And so there was a time when even I wasn't in hijab. And I would say that there was a time of real ignorance in understanding what hijab is all about. There was a time when I honestly believed that I loved Allah so very much. And I do love Allah so very much. And it's the heart that matters. And you know what? The heart does matter. But the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala matters because that's part of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can't say I love you, but I'm running in the different direction following somebody else. Like, can you imagine being so in love with somebody and telling them I really love you so much with all my heart, 
but you're running in a different direction after someone else. You're going to, and you know what? It doesn't, you could be in hijab and still be doing your hair and still be making yourself look pretty. I think women in hijab are so beautiful. I think they are so elegant. I think a Muslim bride is so, so beautiful. And there comes a time when it just becomes so much easier. But you know how it becomes so much easier? When we find ourselves really, really deciding to be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we find ourselves in the company of those that love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you place yourself in circles of those who yearn the same, it becomes so much easier. And thus, beloved, we would be surprised about how many people think it is so beautiful. I think there's a challenge that happens annually around the world where we get to invite non-Muslims to wear hijab for a day. And when you listen to the experiences, the experiences of love and respect, it is absolutely amazing that they, what they go through. And while we know with Islamophobia, it's a bit difficult because I, I have a cousin in Australia and he'd say, Appa, you know, it would be more difficult in Australia if you were to walk around with your hijab like that. But people do it and you do it for the love of Allah. There are many countries that face difficulties. There are many people. But when you understand the beauty and the meaning of this hijab, when you understand the status and the respect that comes with it, it becomes so much easier. But more so, it's never about people. It's never about people. It is about Allah and it is about your obedience to him. And before you know it, bad hair days become bad scarf days when you get used to it. But it is more than worth it. It becomes part of you. And so while many people will feel, you know what, I need to fix my hair, I need to fix my face, all those stresses about that being done to be perfect before stepping out the house. When you step out of the house, having covered yourself, you carry more with you than just your, pe your appearance. You carry, you carry your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You carry yourself as an ambassador of this deen. You carry an entire chapter of the Holy Quran. You carry respect, value, and love. Shukran, Muslima. Shukran, Sister Teslima. We will now listen to a poem by Sister Suraya, followed by the last reflection. Shukran, Muslima. Um, yes, ladies and gentlemen, as mentioned, uh, the final chapter in the book, Reclaim Your Heart by Yasmin Mujahid, she dedicates to a um, compilation of poems which she has written. And we have chosen to read a poem to you titled, A Letter to You. It is hard to explain the freedom. It's so deep and so real. Looking through the confusion, the empty boxes and hollow images, I saw you, Dunya. You place veil after veil over my eyes, trying to win me, deceive me, enslave me to your lies. When the truth is you couldn't give me even a drop of water when I stood at your door begging. I was on my knees before you, desperate for you to fill me. What I see now is a glimpse of clarity that only the stab of perpetual disappointment could carve. And I sit here surrounded by your henchmen, your army of liars sent to keep me in chains. But I won't be your prisoner anymore. I will no longer be that little girl lying awake at night thinking of you. I am no longer that heartbroken child wasting her tears on you. My unrequited love can no longer break me. You won't break me. I won't bend to your glitter and false promises. I am no longer that faithful subject standing before your false throne. 
My tears are no longer yours to have, and my heart is no longer your sanctuary. You can't live here anymore. I've traveled a long way to come here. Sometimes there were deserts where all I needed was a single drop of water that you couldn't give. Sometimes storms where all I needed was a flicker of light to guide my path. And I asked you again and again for what you could not give. For all you have is pomp, boasting and chattel of deception. And so I found myself again and again in deserts without water, in darkness without light. But I am no longer your slave. For there was a man who came to liberate me from this. A man who came to liberate me from this slavery to the slave and bring me to the slavery of the Lord of the slaves. The end. Shukran Muslima. Shukran to Sisiraya. Uh, Taslima, the last reflection will be yours now, inshallah. Okay, Bismillah. So, on this last reflection, I'm also going to take my opportunity in thanking each one that is on with us tonight. Thanking you for being part of this journey with us. Thank you for taking this journey on for yourself. Because as you are sitting there, you have made a huge decision. You have chosen Allah. And that is big. And it is brave. And as easy as it should be, it comes with its challenges. Because while you woke up this morning saying, you know what, I'm going to conquer. Shaitan woke up saying, oh, no, you're not. And he is driven and he is really pumped to destroy you, to conquer you, and to stand in your way. And if you don't realize his influences on the choices that you make, then you are going to be in a lot of problems. You are going to be headed, following him as your leader to exactly where he is destined to be. And no one wants to go there. No one. So today you need to make a promise to yourself to continue searching for Allah in everything you do. That you will continue speaking to Allah no matter where you are. That even if you are going to sleep, that you will sleep with the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to promise yourself that you are going to educate yourself in everything possible and you are going to fight and conquer that shaitan. You are going to fight and conquer your lower self because you are worth it. You are going to wake up and you are going to tell yourself, we are go not going to waste another day. Tonight, I'm sitting here very, very sad. We've had at least three janazas today in the space of hours, hours. And we talk about having another chance. And today, I'm talking about waking up. Life is extremely, extremely short. Love it with gratitude. And your gratitude starts with Allah. Don't dismiss the people in your life, no matter how difficult they can be. You need to love them. With love comes light. You need to love every person, Muslim, non-Muslim. You have to love Allah's creation. You have to be kind to it. You have to be kind to yourself. And so when you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you turn to him with that heart of empathy, that heart of understanding the struggles of others, the heart that understands what, it like, what it's like to lose, but also what it's like to gain. And you know, over these weeks, 
we have learned how to win. We have learned that we win every time something goes wrong that we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We win. You win. And we need to constantly on a daily basis know that we are warriors and we are going to slay that shaitan because we are here to serve and love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when your husband gets on your nerves and he will get on your nerves, you're going to take a deep breath and you're going to remember Allah and you're going to ask him to help you because that's the truth. Life is simple. If you are not speaking to Allah, who are you speaking to? Who's going to help you? No one else can help you. May Allah facilitate help through many of us and may Allah even facilitate it through us. But if you are not making that connection with sincerity, if you're not understanding and calling upon Allah with all of his names, if you are not keeping this lips moist in remembrance of Allah, if you are not remembering our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa if you are not understanding, if you are wanting a life that is easy, if you are wanting a life that is filled with happiness and perfection and everything needs to be perfect, you are in the wrong place. Plain and simple, you are in the wrong place. We need to still get there and you need to do the work here so that we can get there. But you need to love big and you need to love deeply. You need to love with all your heart for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to rise every day with a smile on your face. You're going to conquer. You need to say the alhamdulillah, the subhanallah, the mashallah. But it starts with Allah. It starts with Allah and it ends with Allah. And so over this week, I pray, I pray, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows and facilitates all of us to reclaim our hearts. And that in our company, in your company, those around you will reclaim things. And those around them will reclaim things. If we are able to reconnect and adhere our kids, understanding properly what this heart is for, and not expecting them to love us more than anyone and everything else, really truly loving our purpose, really truly loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we would love a life of all. So it's not about that fancy car. It's not even about a broken car. Nothing here is real. It's just temporary. What is real is that we have this life and we have choices. And if you are not choosing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you need to know what results you are choosing. But I don't want to leave before telling you this. No matter how difficult things get and no matter how many bad choices you have made, we've all made bad choices. Do not doubt in Allah's love. Do not doubt his forgiveness. Do not doubt his mercy. This very moment, don't think you are not worthy of making a change. The very fact that you are sitting here is witness to the fact that you are seeking Allah's love. You are aware of your transgression. But don't doubt, don't compare yourself to others also. Know that your journey to Allah is your journey to Allah. And sometimes even in the same household, our journeys will be different. Your wife's practices will be different to what you would consider a true journey to Allah. But we need to be journeying towards Allah and that's the ultimate. I want to say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Grant you his love, the love of those who love him and everything that brings you closest to his love. I want to remind you as I remind myself to be grateful to those around us, grateful to everyone good and everyone negative. 
that has contributed towards our journey and our growth to this very day. Each one of them, no matter good moments or bad moments, have brought us closer to Allah, have got us speaking to Allah, have got us crying to Allah. And if we can understand that, we could understand why we need to love deeply and wholeheartedly. Our Sheikh, Sheikh Muhammad bin Yahya al Saini al Ninumi, always says, and my husband always teases me, he says, love the creator and love the creation. And that is the truth. We need to love. This world needs love. When we look at all of the conflict around us, it's the lack of love. When we see those difficult people and those troublesome, upsetting characters, they need love. And you're the one to give it. May Allah bless you and bless me and bless all of us. Amen. Shukran so much, Taslima. Just before we end off, um, Sister Surya will read another poem before us, for us, inshallah. Our last poem this evening is titled, Keep Walking. Every day I get closer to our meeting. I feel like I've been walking this path for a thousand years towards you, and yet I am still not there. So close, and yet so far still. But I keep walking, despite the tears, despite the wind, despite the skinned knees and broken bones, despite the bruises and scars that makes this heart what it is today. I keep walking toward you. There's only one direction, one direction towards you, from you to you. I have nothing else, nothing. That is my poverty. I keep walking because behind every sun's setting is a rising. Behind every storm is a refuge. Behind every fall is a rise. Behind every tear is a cleansing of the eyes. And in every spot you've ever been stabbed is a healing and the creation of a skin stronger than it was. I keep walking because wallahi, I have nothing but your mercy. I have nothing but your promise, your words, your promise that, O oh mankind, indeed you are laboring towards your Lord with great exertion and will meet it. Quran 84, 6. Shukran Jazeela, that concludes the final reading session for this installment of Reclaim Your Heart by Yasmin Mujahid. Shukran Sister Sireya. And one more important thing is that we want to take note of is a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, that, that mentions love. And it says, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى ما يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. And part of Medina Institute showing our love to everyone else out there and يحب لأخيه, um, loving for our brothers, is doing this reading circle and encouraging, you know, opening up your heart and strengthening that, that rope and that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And before that, we also, before anything, we also focus on our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, we hope that this circle and these four weeks were very productive and everyone learned something. If there's any contribution, anyone might do so, inshallah. Also a reminder that Medina Institute is on Facebook as well as Instagram, and we may be followed on there for any updates on any programs that we will be running, and also that our applications for the 2020 academic year is also open, inshallah, and we hope to see many new faces there next year, inshallah. Shukran to everyone for joining, and we hope to see you in the near future, inshallah, Amin. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Before we go, um, 
everyone that is on this session that has joined us over the past four weeks, you're welcome um, to comment or if you're wanting to say anything, you may do so now. We'll give you about uh, four minutes or so just before we close the session. So Bismillah, if you'd like to. If there is anyone. Okay, and also I'd just like to take this opportunity to say shukran Surya and shukran Sister Muslima. It's really been a wonderful journey for, my, for me personally. I think that, and I would recommend many to reclaim your heart. And Allah bless um, Ustada Yusmin Mujahid for having this and shared so generously with so many can identify with. So we have to for that. So I see Muslima, you have some comments that you might want to read. Yes, uh, shukran for all the comments, everyone. Um, might be too shy to speak um, or show all their face on the camera. Shukran, um, just some of the comments are looking forward to the next reading and reading circle, inshallah, and the opportunity to join the, the sessions. And it was also very very good to have everyone in our company and also to share our thoughts. And sometimes we think of something and we also learn on the way as we go. And uh, just one person that I also um, need to thank is um, Brother Faisal Roika for, um, for uh, hosting last week. Um, shukran, shukran so much. Uh, when I wasn't, I wasn't feeling well and he stood in for me. <laughs> And um, the experience is always in enlightening and enriching because we are lifelong students. We will, as the, 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 first, the first word or the first verse that was revealed to us was Iqra. And we hope to, to love that. And we hope to till, till the day that we may, we may die, inshallah, in the best possible manner. We, we hope to to live up to Iqra and continue reading and imparting that knowledge to everyone else, inshallah. And shukran for all the comments and the input that we really appreciate. Yeah. Um, Muslim, I want to go to the comments. I want to say, Sister Faiza, shukran for the opportunity to join these sessions. May Allah bless you, Sister Faiza, and may you take jewels from this. Sister Aisha Armstrong says, Jazakallah for an awesome four weeks. Alhamdulillah, very inspiring. Sister Aisha, fighting is all consistency that you actually came. Sister Zahra that is sending you love as well. Sister Shamim Ramon says, Jazakallah, ladies, appreciate this reading circle. Looking forward to more reading circles, inshallah. I mean, I mean, um, I need to say that um, Medina Institute Enrichment has many um, short courses and that you can go onto our social media platforms and actually... Um, uh, check it out. We do currently have one on Nika with Nabil. So maybe you want to find out a bit more about that. You can go onto the onto the platforms to find out more. Also from City Faisal Roika says what mashallah, well done everyone. It's been a wonderful experience. And it's Neem Souls. Shukran to everyone really enjoyed it. Alhamdulillah. I also really enjoyed it. And it's been